I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, what we're going to do is to look at a couple of ways in which we can bring programmed MIDI to life and make it feel a little bit more human. Now, lots of us work on laptops these days, and maybe we don't have our controller keyboards plugged in, maybe we don't own one at all. And what we know is that we have an opportunity using the brush tool, using the pencil tool, and a whole range of other tools to actually create sequences uh, without going anywhere near a keyboard. And the only problem with that process is that most of the notes that we're going to create are going to be on the grid. In fact, if we're not careful, they're all going to be on the grid, giving us this super quantized feel. Now, depending on the music you're making, that might be appropriate. Maybe you make EDM, maybe you make techno, and what you want is this really tight, quantized, machine-like feel. But if you're working on music which you want to have breathe a little bit, what we have to do is to think about ways of doing that to the MIDI notes that we program in order for them to have that quality. And even for those of us who do have controller keyboards plugged in, the temptation is always to reach for quantize. If we play for something which is just a little bit out of time, it's really easy just to go and think, right, I'll fix the timing, leaving us with this very robotic feel. Let's have a listen to this track. Now, often the problems that we make in terms of producing this super quantized feel are often of our own making. I'll show you what I mean. What I'm going to do is add two parts here. And what I'm going to do is to use parts that exist in the track already to create the new ones. So I'm going to take the second violin part and I'm going to take it up to the first violins. And I'm going to just relabel that so I can see that it's my violin one part. And I'm going to dive into the MIDI for this. Now, what I want to do is to basically have each note of this sort of couplet of each individual notes uh, play. So I'm going to strip out the second ones just go through and just remove those individual notes so that what I'm doing is to mark each of the, the sort of strong beats within the piece um, and leave the second violins to play these intermediate notes. So what I've done here is a really common thing which we do all of the time, which is simply to use one part to create another. And having stripped out the notes that I don't need, what I'm then going to do is to think, right, actually what I want these parts really to do is to play an octave higher than the second violin so that we're just getting something which pokes out a little bit more and we can hear that in the context of all of the strings playing together. Okay, so we've added this new part, but remember the second violin part created the first violin part. So the placement of the notes that I'm using are exactly the same as they were for the second violin part. Remember, it's really easy sometimes to forget that when you're programming sounds using sample libraries, that what you're trying to do is to approximate the sound of a string orchestra. And actually, if I had real players playing these notes, inevitably there would be a tiny bit of human error in the timing of these, no matter how well rehearsed the musicians might be. Inevitably, some would slightly rush, some would slightly pull back and bring their own individual playing style. And whilst they're trying to play as metronomically as we can within a computer, actually, we want all that stuff. We want our music to sound like it's played by humans rather than played by a computer. So we haven't helped ourselves there. We can do the same thing all the time with the drum parts that we write as well. Here, I'm going to take some toms that exist on one instrument, and I, I want to reinforce them lower down uh, in uh, the scale using a different instrument. So here, what I'm going to do is to pull um, these sounds that uh, I've got here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, this top sound, this top part, these top notes, I'm going to revoice these, I'm going to just put them uh, down to a slightly different instrument, and in fact I think the sounds that I want are a couple of octaves down from here. So I'm going to transpose this part down, and I'm going to just move the notes to the, the, the pitches that I'd identified earlier on that I wanted to use, and I'm just going to, again, use one part to create another. Let's just see uh, what these sound like by themselves now. Okay, so they're really loud, but the pattern that they're playing I really like. So what I'm going to do is to pull the velocity down so I've got a much more subtle version of that same part. Okay, and what we're going to discover is that that is playing the same rhythm as these toms here. But again, in exactly the same way that I did with the strings, we've now used one part to create 
another. So how do we begin to think about ways in which we could add a more human quality to some aspects of this performance? Well, you'll be delighted to hear that there is one way in which we can do that, which is to use what's called MIDI transform. Let's see how that works. I'm gonna start by taking the second violin part, this busy little line that's playing here. I'm gonna open up its region. And what I'm going to do is to um, select all of the notes that are playing for it. And what I can do within the MIDI editor is to come to functions and to come to MIDI transform. Now what MIDI transform allows me to do is to apply a series of processes onto the MIDI notes that I've selected. And as you can see from the list, there is a long list of things I might want to do to process this MIDI. I might want it to play back at double speed, which will mean that everything plays back twice as fast as it is at the moment. Equally, I can select the option under that and it would all play back at half speed. Now you can go through and you can explore the various options that exist here, but the one that I'm looking for is called Humanize. And when I click on it, this dialog box pops up, which allows me to see what this is going to do to the MIDI that I'm about to change. And specifically, it's going to change three things. It's going to change the position of each note and it's going to do this randomly. It's going to go through and it's going to move the starting position of each note. Now, I get to control how much randomization it applies and the sort of resolution that I want this to focus on. So for example, do I want to randomize these notes by an entire bar? So in other words, do I want them to randomize up to a bar in either direction? No, nope, that would be far too random. Similarly, I don't want them to randomize a beat or even a semiquaver. But what I do want them to do is to randomize a few frames of a semiquaver. In other words, pushing some notes a little early and others a little late. And that's what I can do here. What I also want to do is to randomize velocity. And what that's gonna do is just randomly assign a velocity offset from the current positions by up to 10 steps in either direction. And again, if I want it to be more than 10 steps, I can move that up a little bit. What I also have a chance to do here is to randomize the length of these notes. Now, these are effectively one-shot samples, these short strings that I'm using in this particular piece. It doesn't matter if I program a note that lasts for a bar or for a tiny moment, it's gonna trigger the same length of note. So that one doesn't matter so much, I'm gonna just leave that alone. And then when I select, uh, press select and operate, what's gonna happen behind uh, this window is only clear when we come out of this window and have a look at what it's done to the MIDI behind it. And I'm gonna zoom right in. And what we're going to discover is that some notes which were previously perfectly quantized have been moved late. You can see this one's a prime contender. Others have been moved slightly early. Now, only a tiny bit. But if we apply the same process to the other parts within our track, what we're going to begin to find, of course, is that randomization that maybe we might apply to the cellos is going to be different to the ones that we've applied to the second violin. So if I dive into the cello part and we repeat that process very quickly, select all, come into functions, MIDI transform, humanize, it's going to again give me the option to decide the starting position for each of these notes, and it's also going to give me a chance to produce a velocity offset. Again, length doesn't matter, and I'm going to select and operate those notes too, and again, I can already see a little movement. These have come off the grid a little bit. I'm going to keep the first violins where they are. Remember, uh, they were taken from the second violins to start with, but now that we've changed the second violins, of course, the first violins aren't going to be quite in sync with them in the way that they were before. And what I'm also going to do is to take this first set of toms that we programmed, from which the other one was copied, we're going to open these up to also select these notes and again, finally apply the same process a third time. Again, I'm going to humanize these. I'm going to choose the amount of offset that I want to use. And again, I'm going to create a velocity offset too and then press select and operate. And again, what we're going to see is that we've got these tiny little discrepancies now. Now, if we listen to this piece back with any luck, what we're going to discover is that of course, it's still in time. We've made some very subtle changes here to the positions of notes and to their velocities. But now effectively, we've decoupled the relationship between the second violins and the first violins, and also between the first toms and the tom copy that we created. Let's have a listen. Okay, and even in those uh, really sort of quick four bars, what we're suddenly hearing is just a few notes being a little bit pokey and edgy and early, and others just being a little bit late, and I much prefer that. Now, of course, 
this is effectively an algorithmic way of humanizing MIDI. And you can have your own debate about that. If you would prefer to go through and uh, do this yourself, remember, of course, you can simply open up this MIDI region, select in each individual note and move it early or late. You can decide where each note goes. But as I say, if you've programmed on a laptop and you've drawn these notes in, this is a nice way of just being into it, able to introduce a little bit of variation. So the other thing that we tend to do when we're working with MIDI that we've created on a laptop rather than via a keyboard is we become more reliant on copy and paste, taking regions that we've created and simply copying them so that exactly the same thing plays over and over again. And what we're going to do here is to see how we can change something from being a copy to something that sits in its own right. What I'm going to do is to take this Tom's part here and I'm going to copy it back in a way that we normally would. And of course, these two things are now completely identical. I'm going to glue them together. Now, of course, what I could do would be to dive into here and simply take these notes and change them, either change their velocity or change the pattern that's playing. But what I'm going to do is to use another way of transforming MIDI to make them something else in their own right. And to do that, I'm going to use a feature called Time Handles. What these allow me to do, if I go and select them from the Functions menu and switch Time Handles on, is they allow me to simply create an area around the MIDI that I want to transform. So what I've done is I've created a box, I've drawn around the notes that I want to transform, and you can see that what I've done is also to sort of set a start and end point from a time point of view for the MIDI notes that I've selected. And what I'm then going to do is to drag the start point back to a different point. So effectively what I've done is I've slowed down the speed of these by a factor of two. In other words, I've half sped this uh, little um, this little region that I've created. And using time handles, I can drag notes around in all kinds of ways. I can really stretch them out much more dramatically. And of course, I can compress MIDI as well to make things happen even more quickly if I want to. So what I'm going to do is to come back to where I was a moment ago, and I'm simply going to put these notes um, where I'd like them to be, just to create a, a half speed version of the fill that plays at the end. So effectively, again, I've transformed MIDI to make it become something different. And now those two Tom fills are different from one another. So in this video, we've looked at different ways of transforming MIDI. First of all, we looked at the MIDI transform window and we used the humanize feature. And what that allowed us to do was to ask Logic to supplant some humanizing characteristics onto our MIDI, changing the start points of things. So they're just randomly offset, some a little early, some a little late. We've also changed velocity using that feature as well. Again, asking Logic to make some choices just to make each of our parts independent. And we've also looked at time handles, drawing a box around a series of notes and then using those time handles to stretch out our MIDI to create independent versions of things like drum fills.